Okay, in this video we want to talk about interpretations of the second derivative. So here's a statement that is an example of one which involves the second derivative. So let's see why. So how does the statement go? The rate at which a virus spreads grows with time. So why is this second derivative? Well, we're looking at the rate, so this is a first derivative. It's supposed to indicate this rate at which the virus spreads. And then this thing itself is growing. So what does that mean? The fact that this first derivative grows means that the second derivative is positive. So the first derivative part is the rate at which the virus spreads. The fact that it grows with time is the fact that the derivative of f prime of x is positive. The derivative of f prime of x is known as the second derivative. So what we get out of this statement is the following, f double prime is positive. To make this a little bit more precise, we're going to let f of x be the number of individuals with the virus. infected by virus. Okay, then f prime of x is the rate of change in the number of individuals. With the virus. And then f double prime is the rate of change in the rate. And saying that f double prime of x is positive is saying that this rate of change is positive, meaning that the rate is growing. Growing means increasing. That's what why f double prime is positive. So the rate at which the virus spreads is f prime of x. The fact that that is growing means the second derivative is positive. Okay, that's one example where you can use the second derivative to uh, interpret statements involving growth. Let's look at a different example. So in this example, we look. This is an example from biology. Uh, we're considering the carrying capacity. What is the carrying capacity? So it's what biologists use to measure um, the effect of the ability of an environment to support a population. So the carrying capacity is the maximum number of members of a species, maybe elephants or mice or whatever, that a particular environment will support. For example, the car carrying capacity of the Earth for humans was often thought to be, say, 5 billion people. Maybe that's as most we can support. But in fact, we're starting to surpass that. So maybe the carrying capacity of the Earth for humans is 10 billion people. But each species and each environment has a different carrying capacity. But a general principle is that a population will grow more slowly as it comes close to its carrying capacity. So let's think about what this statement means graphically. So here f of x, or f of t maybe, because we're dealing with time, f of t is going to be the um, number of in individuals uh, uh, in, of species. in that environment. Whatever environment we're dealing with here. Like the Earth, humans and the Earth. 
So uh, let's think about what the graph might look like. Well, uh, populations are growing as long as we don't reach the carrying capacity. Um, usually populations like to grow until there's no longer any resources for them, uh, until they reach the limit of the resources available. So the carrying capacity should be thought of as a maximum of this function. Here's the, so the carrying capacity is this horizontal line. You can't go beyond the line because there's no more resources after that. And so the growth in the number of, of uh, individuals of the species will keep going up. The species will multiply and multiply. But as it gets closer and closer to this line, the rate at which it increases is, is uh, becoming slower and slower. So the population will grow more slowly as we reach that carrying capacity. We never actually quite reach the carrying capacity. We, in fact, this is what's called an asymptote. So we get arbitrarily close as time moves on. OK, you can see from this, this is actually a graph that's concave down, in particular the second derivative of f. So this is f of x. The second derivative is negative as we approach this carrying capacity. And that's what this statement here says. A population will grow more slowly. More slowly means that the derivative, the rate of change, is getting smaller. So that means that it's a decreasing function. So the derivative, this, this here means that the derivative, f prime, is decreasing. Since the derivative is decreasing, its derivative is negative. What is its derivative? Well, the derivative of the derivative is f double prime of x, and this says it's negative. So this statement, grow more slowly, is equivalent to the fact that this graph is concave down. OK, this is a, uh, another example of when the second derivative might be useful in understanding real life phenomenon.